Sacre bleu, that's what I call a masterpiece. The name of this movie is The Army of the Shadows. It was released in 1969 by Jean-Pierre Melville, who was a former resistant. Melville was actually his resistant name, and I don't remember what was his original name. It is based on a book by Joseph Kessel, who was also a French resistant. The movie is called The Army of Shadows, not The Shadow Army. The Shadow Army was the nickname of the French Resistance. The Army of Shadows is a perfect title because it is about what it meant to be a French Resistant during the occupation. It's quite an old movie, but it has not aged a bit in my humble opinion. And this is due to the fact that the movie is very minimalist, very effective. It goes straight to the point. There are no special effects. Don't look for any great battle scenes or bravura moments, none of that. But the tension is always there and it's hard to breathe all the time. In that sense, it's a lot like a thriller or a crime film. The movie is very sober in the way it is realized, but it is what makes it even more powerful. It features two great French actors, Lino Ventura and Simone Signoret, who are at the top of their game. By the way, Lino Ventura has quite a story. Italian by birth, he was conscripted into the Italian army at the start of the Second World War. He deserted when the fascist regime collapsed in July 1943 and went to Paris, threatened with denunciation in order not to be arrested by the Germans. He lived in a house used as a barn, which he returned to buy once the war was over. He was a wrestler who looks like a bear and exudes an aura of quiet strength in this movie. As for Simone Signore, as she was half Jewish, let's say that World War II was not quite a pleasant time for her. She and her family fled for a time in Brittany, then joined the Free France in London. In 1940, she came back to Paris, started her career in theater, but due to her condition and considering the anti-Semitic law, faced severe difficulties while trying to build her career. They are very, I'd say, sober and minimalist in their interpretation of their characters. This minimalist aspect is what makes the movie so effective because it's not an action-packed movie. The plot is actually quite simple, but what is at stake is very, very easy to understand at any moment. One thing I particularly enjoyed was that the film didn't try to explain or overexpose. Everything was shown perfectly on the assumption that the viewer is intelligent enough to understand what is going on. In a brilliant cinematic effect, a packet of cigarettes is passed from hand to hand between different characters who find themselves in an extreme situation. And this is the director's way of making us understand what has just happened and the consequences for everyone. That's a brilliant demonstration of show don't tell. Simple, childish, but incredibly powerful. There is not a lot of action. There is not a lot of violence. We see the effect of the violence on the French resistance. We see their broken faces after they have been interrogated by the SS. But we don't see these scenes of torture during the interrogation. And that's 
a great stuff that the movie does. When I was watching it, I was assuming that it was kind of a way to insist on the consequences and suffering of the resistance fighters to keep them at the center of the viewer's interest rather than showing a cliché sadistic SS officer giving free rein to his ultra-violence and relieving himself of the harm inflicted on his victim, the victim rather than the executioner. Of course this since happens because Hey, what would be a good film about the Second World War without a Nazi psychopath using his creativity to inflict immense suffering on other people? But when it finally happens, well, I let you find out for yourself. Actually, when we see violence, it's often between resistance themselves out of retaliation or vengeance or as a punishment for giving up another resistant and it is very very dramatic because here we are touching with our finger what it means to be a resistant <laughs> If you're a resistant, you're joining a struggle where there is no glory to be found. There is no reward. It is not going to improve your life. On the contrary, you're going to live in very, very difficult conditions. You're not going to sleep. You will be with the stress, with the fear of being caught at every moment. You're going to experience very stressful situations and you will basically have no mean to defend yourself. Often your choice is betray or commit suicide and the relief can come from over resistance when they understand the impossible situation you're in and they assess you're now a danger to the whole organization and they decide to end your life out of mercy and you'll welcome it. That leads us to another aspect of being a resistant. It deprives you from a part of your humanity because here you can be considered as a threat and over resistance can also threaten you. These are a large spectrum of individuals who joined the fight. We don't exactly know why we don't really know their drivers behind this they are from every social classes some of young over or elders some are alone over have a family that they need to protect and this adds up to the level of risk and here being a fighter being a warrior is going to test you to the limits of your humanity. It's going to put you in face of impossible choices, of immense struggles, of constant dilemmas between your morale and what you are willing to do. But at the end of the day, what prevails is your willingness to fight because you freaking hate to see the German and the Nazis on your soil. Ami, entends-tu le vol noir des corbeaux sur nos plaines? The movie is not forgiving. Anyone can be weak. Everyone is kind of miserable. The threat comes from everywhere, from the Germans, from the SS, from the Gestapo, from the French as well. And when we are talking about the French, we are talking about everybody. We are talking about the French militia, who was the militia in the service of Vichy France under Maréchal Pétain. But we are also talking about 
other French people who were at the end of the day struggling. The movie describes, among other things, what life was under German occupation, the constant struggle to even bring food on your table, to find bread, forget about meat and all of other fancy stuff like this, no? Add to that the fact that even your parents, your spouses and your children can become a threat or a lever that the occupier can use to make you crack. Turn everyone in and if you refuse or try to take your life, I'll send your whole family to a deportation camp and I'll subject them to the worst abuses. And that's why the movie is also brilliant, not showing a lot of action of tactics of geostrategic reflections and so on no 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 oh of course a british pilot was evacuated here um, ss man was killed there and great plans were made to allow prisoners to escape but often all to no avail most of the time it's ungrateful things executing some poor kid who's betrayed us transporting a parcel from point A to point B, hide from the police and the Gestapo to carry out a message you don't understand at all, and all that at immense risk. All of this for something they do not quite understand. They don't know the whys of what they are doing, but they are going to do it anyway. So I don't want to spoil anything from this movie, I just want you to go and see it. Because not only is it a great movie about the resistance, but it is a cinematic masterpiece, period. I promise you're going to have a hell of a time watching this all-time great movie. I watched this movie because I am currently preparing a report in the French National Museum about resistance and deportation, which is located in Lyon, which is my hometown. I am working on it with the team of the museum. This museum talks about every aspect of life under German occupation, collaboration, resistance, deportation, day-to-day -day life, and I am very, very excited about it. And on this note, I'm going to end the video here. Go watch this movie, please. Thank you, bye.